folks, we have a very special guest for you tonight. I'd like to introduce... Biomimicry, which adapts properties of animals, plants, and ecosystems to human designs and buildings. We realized we needed to look back to where we had always found inspiration, natural systems. Why can't our built environments uh, engage the same kinds of dynamic principles that drive the natural world? So it became as simple for us as looking at how a spider builds. So as a spider builds by creating a dynamic structure, he connects to his environment, creating uh, variable guidelines. And they, uh, he creates a new environment for himself. So we realized we could borrow techniques like this from the natural world and apply them to existing construction systems. And organisms know how to do this. After 3.8 billion years, Life has learned what works and what's appropriate on the planet. And right now, that's what the people trying to redesign our world are looking for. With this new information, architects can incorporate intelligent, high-performance assemblies and systems that invest in fundamental issues of architecture, including material, energy, space, time, and information. What we do in biomimicry is we bring in biologists to the design table. We look at how does nature contain liquids? How does nature repel water? So for instance, go outside, look at any leaf and the veins in a leaf, and what you're seeing is the world's best water distribution network. There's an amazing thing called the Murray's Law that says that all branching structures in the natural world, including our lungs, they all follow a single mathematical formula. And it has to do with the pipe, branches, and it drops down to a smaller diameter, and then it branches again, and that drops down to a smaller diameter, and that's predictable. People in building, in green building now, are starting to say, well, maybe our 90 degree angles that we have in plumbing are really friction devices. So maybe we should distribute electricity differently in a building, water differently in a building, even, even gases, even air conditioning differently in a building by mimicking this Murray's Law in, in, our, in our plumbing. Natural systems, like plants for example, uh, offer a wide array of astounding properties that the discipline of architecture can really learn from. Uh, plants, for example, are composed of modular building blocks uh, at several scales. These modular building blocks give plants a regularity of sorts uh, but at the same time, they also are able to generate a wide range of variation. So this ability to use a limited kit of parts, um, while at the same time being able to generate a wide spectrum of variation in response to environmental factors, is something that's very, very uh, important. Concrete. I was inspired by learning that the production of Portland cement, which is the main cementing component of concrete, produces about a ton of carbon dioxide for every ton of cement produced. We're studying how evolutionary structures are adapted to their environment. So for example, if we look at an organism like the corals that build reefs, there's a natural interaction between CO2, which is a gas, and water. And they come into equilibrium together and the CO2 is dissolved in water. In building reefs, corals have developed an incredible ability to calcify. They're the most prolific mineralizers on the planet. But I realized right away that I could form a cement that didn't produce carbon dioxide. In fact, would use carbon dioxide as a raw material, just like corals do. In biomimicking what corals do, what we're really trying to mimic in some cases is how they can mineralize so rapidly and so prolifically to make the largest biologic structures on the planet, like the Great Barrier Reef. So recent investigations in the worlds of architecture and science lead us to a broader understanding of how what we build interacts with the environment at every level. Can we, as architects, envision a relationship with nature that is symbiotic or perhaps even productive? If so, we can push design beyond sustainability to literally sponsor new architectural landscapes that redefine the nature of, so of the spaces that we have.
Morphin in Rhythm Management. Let's begin. All right now, wasn't that fun? Let's try something else. The most important thing that people should know is that a sustainable world already exists. We're just now beginning to open our eyes and realize that the answers to the questions we've been asking, how do we live here sustainably, are all around us. Ha, ha, ha. 